Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome back to the Essential Guide to Audio Routing in Cubase. We're going to have a look at Send Effects tracks today. If you're enjoying this series and you want to help support me, check out the Patreon and YouTube channel member links below. Fabulous way to do that. Now, effects tracks and group tracks are almost the same thing technically, but functionally they're wildly radically different. And that's why Cubase fundamentally treats them as separate entities. Other DAWs don't. What I'm going to do is make sure that my piano track is selected so that I can right click in the mix console and here are the two options sat right next to each other. This time I'm going to create an FX channel and here's the one technical difference between the two. When I'm creating an FX track I have the option to automatically assign uh, an effect to it so I'm going to create uh, a delay unit here and I'm going to call it keys delay. Let's have a look at what's happened to the mix console. What we've just done there is created a second brand new audio stream. Our original stream, the piano track, goes to the keys master, the keys master goes to the stereo out. We hear that single piano tone. Just realized I never actually played the piano tone that we're hearing. That's what it sounds like. Then we had a second route, which takes that piano tone that we just heard and sends it to a, to a new place, not to the keys master. It goes to the delay track instead. Here's the delay track that goes directly to the stereo out. And so we've now got two completely independent audio streams. This time when I press play, you're going to get the original piano note and then the delayed effect. When I created that track, I created a deliberate mistake because on the delay track, you can see that the routing is going to the stereo out bus. What this means is that we've created a back door via which we can circumvent our keys master track. If I press play again and reduce the keys master volume to zero, you're still hearing all of those delay bounces. You're no longer hearing the original piano note. You're only hearing the piano, uh, the, the, the delay bounces. That's obviously a situation we don't want. And this is one of the things that you need to carefully guard against when you're creating your routing plan. Make sure that all of your effects fit properly into that plan. In order for us to fix that problem, we need to route our keys delay to the keys master. And so now with our keys master volume at zero, when I press play, you're going to hear no sound. As I bring the keys master fader up, both the original tone and the piano delay uh, sound are reintroduced. Now everything that I said is kind of mostly true, technically true, but there's still another flaw. Uh, in what we've got here. Because when I created that audio effect, by default, it set its mix level to less than 100%. See the mix knob in the effects unit here is partially dry. In fact, it's more dry than wet. What that means is that some of the dry signal is going through the delay unit. Well, if you create a, an, an auxiliary bus upon which an effects unit is sat, you want that auxiliary bus to do that thing and that thing alone. You don't want any dry signal at all. So it's pretty much a golden rule that if you have an effects track, set your mix to 100%. And now you've got a really clear routing plan. Your dry signal is going directly to the keys master and off ultimately to the stereo out. Your wet signal is going through the send track, then onto the keys master and then onto the stereo out. The consequence of what I did by turning that knob up is that all of the delay sounds are now going to be louder. This is what we were hearing originally, more or less. When I turn the mix knob up, all of those delay sounds get louder. In fact, the first delay repeat is at the same volume as the original signal. That's absolutely fine and currently quite correct. The way that we now control it is with the send level from the send effect itself. So if I pull this down, get it going again. Pull this down to a minus six. The first delay sound is gonna be half the volume of the original sound because you get a doubling of volume every six dB. We pull this thing down. We basically mix to taste. Now we've got a nice, um, nice delay effect. So everything so far is completely fine. But the consequence of what we've done is that we have to be very careful about using global effects. Let's say I'd named this effect just delay. On this track over here, we've got a strummed guitar chord. 
if I wanted to route that guitar chord into the delay unit as well, well, there's actually nothing stopping me. Here's my effects unit, it's called delay. I can route to it. I can turn the send effect on. Now I'm hearing the guitar delay. There's a fundamental problem there. Here I've got some audio called guitar. I have a guitar master track, but the guitar is sending to a delay unit that's routing into the keys master track. So that's horrible. That's clearly a terrible thing to do. At this point, the only way that we would be able to fix this is route the original delay track back to the stereo out bus. And now this delay unit is a truly song wide um, effects track. It's basically taking feeds from absolutely anywhere and routing directly to the stereo out. The problem with that is that we've once again completely subverted our master tracks. I turn the two master tracks down and press play. We're hearing everything. The guitar chord is clear, it's quite a bit louder than the piano note, but the piano note is still there. For this reason, I don't create song wide effects tracks. If I wanted to create a delay unit for the guitars, I would create a brand new um, effects unit called Guitar Delay and route to that directly. And so I've just undone all of those changes and got me back to the situation where we had it all working perfectly well. Piano track routing into the keys um, delay, keys delay routing into the keys master. The next decision we need to make is whether or not the delay is pre or post fader. At the moment and by default, this is a post fader effect, which means, get it running again. If I turn the fader on the piano track down, all of the delay sound disappears as well. I reopen my mix console and click this little symbol, the dot to the right of the, uh, the speaker symbol. If I move it to the left, this is now a pre-fader send, which means it doesn't matter where the fader is set on the, on the track, you're always gonna get the same amount of signal going to the delay unit. So there's our audible delay sound, and the volume of it is configured by this control. Now it's far and away the more common to have a post fader delay send because you, you've got that intrinsic and intuitive link between the volume of the original sound and the volume of the affected sound. Here I'm just dealing with delay. And in the case of delay and reverb, you generally speaking want a very clear link between the two things. But if you were sending to maybe effects units, like sound effects units, you might want the sound effect to always be at the same volume, regardless of what the original dry sound was. And so you might choose to employ a pre-fader send. Another implication of creating multiple audio streams is the effect that you have on volume created myself a couple of meters here. The top meter is measuring the original piano sound before any effects or sends are applied to it. The lower volume meter is on the stereo output bus. So this is basically the last link in the chain. I've muted the guitar effect, but I'm still sending fully to it. So the entire piano signal is being routed into the delay track, into the effects track, and then on ultimately to the stereo out bus you're going to see a doubling in volume between these things. In other words, a six decibel difference. I'll get it running just to demonstrate that. So here the difference between these two integrated values is six dB. So the output volume is twice the level of the input volume. That makes complete sense. We've got these two identical signals. They're both being mixed together, doubling of volume, all very straightforward. The moment I introduce the delay effect, that signal will drop dramatically, but there'll still be part of it there. In other words, there's gonna be an increase of volume, but it'll no longer be 6 dB. So it's about one and a half dB. I'm having to leave this running at the moment for an interesting technical reason. If I shut this down, the meters will die, watch. So as I shut it off, the meters are going to basically get quieter and quieter. The reason for that is because there's a curious quirk when you're performing analysis on delay um, units. Loudness meters have a gate that shuts off when the volume of the signal um, drops below a certain level. If you're performing analysis on, uh, on a dry track compared with a 
delay track, the dry track is simply open less of the time. In other words, the moment that piano sound stops, the meter stops uh, performing its calculations, whereas the, with the delay sound, it's getting quieter and quieter and quieter, but not quiet enough uh, for the loudness meter to shut down. And so I had to actually disengage the gate in order to see the difference between those two levels. As you saw, you know, technical issues aside, there was about a one and a half dB difference in volume between the two tracks. That means that if you want your final output level to be the same as if delay hadn't been applied to it, you want to hear the effect, but you don't want to hear it get louder, you'd need to drop the level of your original source data track itself. If you leave this track at zero and try to control the level from your delay send, the result is always, always going to be louder than it would have been beforehand because you're adding sound you're adding volume to the mix, there's, there's no way around that. So the only way to get to that equivalence would be to drop the original track by maybe 1.2 dB. Somewhere in the ballpark is gonna get about right. You've dropped most of the volume from the original. You're adding a little bit more in on the delay. Those two things will basically balance out to be the same overall volume as if you'd never applied the effect in the first place. Something else interesting to bear in mind with send effects while we're talking about volumes is that if you're adding effects like delays or reverbs, it's gonna push the, the sound further back in the mix. It's gonna make it sound as if it's quieter than it would have been had it been dry. And so that might be something that you wanna consider as well when you're deciding what, to, what balance to bring between these various different sounds. And all of these issues are fundamentally ingrained in our routing decisions. The more branches you create, the more different paths that you have, you need to know what impact those changes are gonna have on the sound and how you go about basically actively and intelligently deciding what to do with those issues. Anyway, that'll do us for today. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit the like button. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks very much.